Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to BT Talks, episode 41. Today, I have the pleasure of having Rishi Kapoor, who is the founder and CEO of Location Ventures. Uh, he's also the developer of uh, Villa Valencia, which is a one of a kind uh, project. So we'll tell you more about that. Bear with me one second. I'm going to invite him to join the live. Thanks to everyone who is joining my live. Hi, Carla. Hi, Rishi. How are you? Good. How are you? Nice to meet you. Very good. Nice to meet you here. And thank you so much for, for being uh, of course. part of my show, BT Talk. So now this is uh, my 41st episode. I've been doing this for uh, the past few months trying to stay consistent to a week and uh, inviting some amazing people. A lot awesome. of people I know, some I don't know yet, uh, but I'm sure we'll have the opportunity to uh, meet in person and work on, on a few projects together. Awesome. Well, thank you uh, so much for having me. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. So um, I always like to start my, my BT Talks with um, you introducing yourself and kind of telling us your journey um, into real estate development and in Miami and more specifically Coral Gables. Sure. So uh, we founded Location Ventures uh, just over six years ago, and that follows uh, in my family's footsteps of 40 plus years in the uh, United States Southeast around Atlanta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. um, and ultimately my father uh, was doing industrial warehouse space, uh, then single family homes, then single family home communities, then uh, budget hotels throughout the Southeast, and then um, class A office space. And then uh, about six years ago, we decided to get involved in projects down here in South Florida and are now developing uh, just over $650 million worth of projects in South I saw I saw all your projects and it's quite impressive. Yeah. I have to say within six years. So you pretty much go through all the different types of real estate from what I see. Uh, residential, commercial, industrial a little bit maybe, office space. No. <laughs> yeah, not, not on the industrial, but the... The segments are very high-end single-family homes, yep. um, and then boutique luxury condominiums like exactly. Villa Valencia. Exactly. And then uh, we have a renovations business, and then in addition to that, a co-living and co-work uh, business by the name of Urban. Very cool. So yep. we're going to start with Villa Valencia, which yep. is uh, you know uh, a, a product that's dear to me. I just I. I uh, been to the sales gallery quite a few times. I'm friends with uh, Patsy, who actually put us in awesome. touch. Um, but I really love love it because it's very boutique, and it's in a great neighborhood of Coral Gables. Um, and it's kind of like between a luxury condo and a home, but it's the best of all of it. Um, and 100%. it's only 39, 39 residences. Yep. Um, and what I like a lot is the wellness element. Um, that is included, which is, which is the, the Darwin home system. Yep, by and I, I, I believe it's the first uh, in the U.S., is that correct? We're the first condominium project in the United States to launch with their program included with every unit. And are, do you have other projects you're going to include it in? Is there a lot of other condos in the U.S. or in Miami that will be using this system? Yeah, we, we actually made a referral for them over to Related. So Related That's will great. soon. Oh, uh, I know that project. It's, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, um, so, so, so Delos can thank me on that one. And, um, and then we are launching another project, a luxury condominium uh, wellness-focused project in Fort Lauderdale. So it's something that we, we plan on including in every project going forward. Yeah, because wellness, uh, you know, with the, the times we're living in is becoming more and more important. Yeah, um, we, we were fortunate that, you know, we planned this project almost three years ago. Um, and it was something that's a pillar of our organization. So mm -hmm. very, very important to us. Um, but where we are in the times, like you said today, I no longer think that these type of 
um, offerings are just going to be add-ons. I think you're going to see a lot of it included as standard on a go forward basis. Yeah. People want to have it. I mean, I know yep. that, you know, when I'm going to purchase a home, I'd like to have, you know, that uh, Darwin from Delos, you know, system exactly. with uh, air filtration, water filtration. Um, can you tell us everything that it includes? Yeah. So starting with the water filtration, we include that at Villa Valencia standard in the master baths and then also the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And then we include um, the air purification system that includes monitoring throughout the unit. So you can actually move the application, which is awesome. in addition to that, we um, have the, uh, the wellness lighting, which is circadian rhythm lighting. And basically it is included in the master apartment. Mm -hmm. In case there was some um, uh, streaming issue. So yeah. the, the idea with the circadian rhythm lighting is that it starts in the morning with a color temperature that mimics the sun. You can have the same kind of hot temperature throughout the day to help your body wake up much like we did you know, tens of thousands of years ago as a, as a species. And then ultimately in the evening, you can get that warm glow to help the body get into more of a sleep oriented rhythm. And those three components are what I'll um, round out our wellness offering, all provided by uh, the Darwin system by Delos out of New York. And, and we're super excited to be the the first condo project at Villa Valencia in the country to include all of that. No, that's great. I mean, you, you guys are integrating technology, wellness, and those are things that, you know, now today in the home that you really need. Tell us about Villa Valencia. So it's 39 residences. Yep. Uh, it's starting at three bedrooms up to six bedrooms. Yep. Um, and it has a full range of great amenities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the thesis of Villa Valencia was to take, the high-end single family home and have it as condo living without compromise. So we wanted people to be able to live in a vertical environment where they were trying to simplify their life. They didn't want to take care of the big house or have the big yard and the maintenance. A lot of people are right sizing out of larger houses because yep. maybe empty nesters. And then other folks are also looking at it as a, as a lifestyle choice that once you get to a certain age, you might decide, I want to travel more. And it's easier to just kind of lock a key and kind of leave and go travel wherever you need to around the world. So that was the, the thesis behind what we wanted to create with Villa Valencia. Um, average unit size, 3,000 square feet with 1,000 square feet of terraces. We have private parking garages. Um, we really just wanted to help recreate that single family home environment. And, and that's, uh, I believe, but what I, we have yeah. accomplished. I think it's brilliant because, you know, in, in, in real estate, when, whether, you know, when people are looking, whether for condos or for houses, we, we all go through different stages in life. So that's when you need, you know, you want a house, okay, you have kids, you want to be in a certain neighborhood, condo is more practical, you have all the amenities, you have the lifestyle. And here with Villa Valencia, it's really the best of all worlds and you have the wellness element. So it's really, really nice. And, and it's a very good neighborhood. Why did you choose Coral Gables? Was it an opportunity or? Yeah, it was more? an opportunity uh, there. I mean, I, I've been in Miami now almost 20 years and the majority of our business is between Coconut Grove and Coral Gables. So it's one of the cities that's near and dear to my heart. And it was an opportunity um, we, we had a, an interesting path to the transaction um, and then ultimately pivoted it to focus on luxury condo units at the highest end. You know, we set out with the goal of being the, the most luxurious address in Coral Gables. And I think you're seeing that. I mean, we're averaging right about $1,000 a foot. And that's a market that wasn't even seeing uh, seven, seven fifty. And it's just a, it's a testament to saying like, you have a very affluent, beautiful neighborhood. Yeah. And if you put in high end product that people are accustomed to in these other neighborhoods with their custom houses that many of them have been in for so many years that nobody wants to compromise on quality. And I think that, you know, we've delivered on that promise 
of being the most luxurious address in Coral Gables. And it's just such a wonderful city. You've seen a huge revitalization of the downtown area uh, from Miracle Mile to Geralda. You've got the incredible shops of Merrick Park just down the street. Yeah, it's, a, it's a very... The airport. It's, it's just a great neighborhood. It's a very, you know, beautiful neighborhood. It's very yeah. safe. Obviously, it's very family-oriented. Yes. Um, there's a lot of businesses always uh, that are coming to Coconut Grove and Coral Gables. It's proximity to Brickell downtown and even to Miami Beach. So I think it's a very attractive uh, neighborhood, and it has changed a lot also. I, I haven't been in... Uh, in Miami for that long. I, I actually came from New York about a year and a half ago, but I've been coming back and forth for quite a few years. And as you know, like Miami is probably, I think the fastest growing city in the world. I mean, it's constantly changing. We're lucky we have a great mayor, Mayor Francisco Suarez, who is doing a lot and is pushing and I actually had him last he week sure on, is. on the show. Um, and you know, he's, he's leading by example and he's bringing yeah. a lot of people by his leadership. And that's why a lot of people are moving to Miami or thinking of it or going to move over the next few months for years. Um, and actually Coral Gables is, uh, is very much in demand. Um, you know, for, yeah, I mean, for... you're talking about one of the uh, year before last voted best place in Florida to live. Um, it's got all of the amenities of a world class city. And really, you're so centrally located exactly, to yeah. all of the pockets of Miami. I mean, Miami is, in a way, similar to other great cities around the world, where it's really a collection of neighborhoods and cities. And what, what's great about Coral Gables is that you're a quick drive to any of them. So it's a, yeah. it's a beautiful, beautiful and, location. And I tend to find, so, you know, as being a real estate agent advisor, I came here and I went to see every property from you know Coral Gables, Key Biscayne, all the way to Golden Beach, whether it's new developments, uh, whether it's villas, single family homes. And I tend to find for some reason that in Coral Gables, the construction is just much better. Is there a reason for that? I just <laughs> well, find I mean, that, that- The Gables has really, the Gables has very um, uh, carefully thought out design requirements. Yeah, um, okay. you know, even for a single family house, you have to go through a design review board. You know, it is it is an area that has high standards and high even zoning ordinances on what is allowed uh, once you even live and occupy in a place. So they've done all of that to create a brand and a, yeah. and a standard. And I think that that more than any other kind of pocket of Miami, they have a brand that they stay very true to yep. and the standard is quite high. And I think that's why you, you get that sense of the property value and the construction being higher than other parts of the city. Yeah. I actually went to see one of the, the properties you developed on chair lane. Yeah. Which is very, <laughs> very nice. I was like, wow, this house is incredible. It's really, yeah, thank you. Na nature oriented, the finishes and everything. It's really, really nice. Yeah, thank you for saying that. I mean, that that is is representative of our three pillars. We everything we do in the four divisions of our company is about nature, wellness, and technology. So all I the think, things I love, you know, I yeah, believe in. So, it's <laughs> so if you go to one of our projects in in one form or another, you are going to see those three pillars manifested into our work, and and that's the core of everything that we work on. Exactly. So I'm curious to know, so how, so do you have any advice for people who want to become developers who want to go in that field, maybe in a little longer term? I know there may be also some, you know, real estate agents at some point in their life want to get into the development phase. Do you have any advice on that? Because I, I, I yeah. find it really exciting. Um, you need to have quite some experience. Um, yeah. what, what would you advise for that? So somebody who's taking the lead in development, I would advise to make sure that they are exposed to the following the, to the following components. Because everybody says, you know, development. There is there isn't there isn't really a, a class. I know there you can get uh, um, MBAs or or specialty master programs in development. That that doesn't do what I think the real job of the lead developer is, which is somebody who has a knowledge of finance, of sales and marketing, 
um, co design and construction, government relations, and ultimately being able to, to move through uh, various municipalities. Um, the list goes on and on. And really as a developer, I feel like you need to have some type of exposure to each of those components because you are going to be quarterbacking an effort that moves through each of those segments. So then obviously you should have a focus in something like my focus before getting into building is my, my greatest strength was sales and marketing. So I knew it's I could a good bring, strength to have. <laughs> yeah. And I knew I could bring a hundred percent and acumen to that, but I needed to surround myself with those other seats uh, with experts in those positions. And you can either, the beautiful thing about the development world is there almost all of those sections that I, I mentioned, you can find as a third party or you can build out your own team. And we chose to build out our own team. And we've got about 30 people full time in our organization, but we employ hundreds, if not a thousand contractors at a time. Exactly. So the idea is that one of the beauties of the development world is that you can really kind of latch and um, uh, I should say you can really kind of grow by using third parties. So you don't have to worry about fixed overhead as you're getting off the ground. And then my, my third party, third part of advice would be um, just start with something like don't, don't worry about it being the biggest, the best, you know, to me, I would just urge people to get going, like find a project, yeah start small, even if it was a four unit or a small house or a renovation, is just work through that process and get experience. Um, and then my final piece of advice is just, you have to have patience. So- uh, I think that is the case for, yeah. for everything. I think whether, I mean, probably a little more when you're a developer, but I think also, you know, as a real estate agent advisor, you need patience. You need to yes. also understand people. It's a lot of psychology more than anything else. Um, and I think also, I mean, as a developer as well, because you, you deal with so many people, whether it's the city municipality, whether it's yeah. the architect or whether it's, you know, the sales and marketing team, whoever it is, you, yep. I always think that, I mean, we're in the people business. So, you know, real estate Absolutely. is one thing, but understanding people, what they want, how things are done, what you should do is, is really, really important. So, so well, how so. is, so how is the, you know, a, a typical day? in the life of a developer? Uh, there's no typical day. <laughs> Everything, every day is different. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll just tell you my, my day, every week, I start the week with a leadership meeting with our team uh, to touch base on goals for the week. Mm -hmm. um, and I, we, we then break into divisional meetings throughout the week. So the four divisions that I talked about and then I also meet with the heads of some of our departments. So I'll meet with the asset management team. I'll meet with the treasury team, marketing, and that'll be kind of my meeting structure throughout the week. And then in, a, in addition to that, then it's product meetings, it's meeting with investors, it's meeting with landowners, um, with the, the mayor, I was with uh, your guest, Mayor Suarez yeah. Yeah. Um, last week and you know, it's, it's really just taking your day and being able to segment it into um, actionable items that get you closer to your goal, whether that's acquiring a new site, uh, whether it's um, uh, getting a project approved or sales. And that's really what, what the days uh, look like. What is, what is the, the biggest challenge that you could face as a developer? I mean, I assume there may be several, like, I mean, yeah. in any business, but yeah. I mean, it's hard to say one. I mean, it's just, yeah, there's, you, yeah. You, you've got, it, it is a tough business. Um, you are dealing with um, market conditions. You know, you could do everything right. And, and a market condition changes that's completely out of contr your control. And yeah. you've been baking a product for three or four years and uh, if the market timing's not right, you're wrong, even as much as you've tried to do everything right. So that, that is always an underlying um, uh, threat uh, and challenge. But beyond that, I mean, we've just talked about all these different personalities and segments of people. I mean, 
you you just have challenges kind of corralling all of that exactly uh, getting everybody to move in sync um and hitting deadlines all while carrying a property and the clock is running on your finances as well so look it's 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 a very very challenging business and that's why you know i think that um people that go into it have to understand that um there's moments that take great perseverance and you need to have financial wherewithal to get yep. through difficult situations and i believe i'll say something some people say don't you know don't leverage i believe in leverage i mean leverage is a tool to yep. be able to to get to certain financial goals and also to scale so it's a tool that has to be used um appropriately it's also i remember one of my mentors saying hey in you know land and loans eat three meals a day and they don't that's, stop so that's you know, that's a good one yeah <laughs> that's something to think about is that you know your land and your loans they eat all day long and you've got to be ready to to um to to be prepared for that yeah well rishi thank you so much for being a wonderful guest um, thank you i think everybody learned a lot Um, and anybody who's interested in learning more about Villa Valencia, please feel free to contact me. Um, I can schedule a, uh, an appointment at the sales gallery, which is wonderful. It is yep. uh, supposed to be completed by the end, I believe, of 2021, if I'm correct. In yeah, the so fall? We're, tar yeah. we're targeting the fall of 2021, correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there is still availability, but it's a one-of-a-kind uh, property, and it's worth seeing. Uh, so please DM me, contact me, and uh, I'll send you some information or I can take you to the gallery. It's really wonderful. Rishi, thank you so much. And uh, I look forward to seeing you soon. Yeah, and, thank um, you, Benjamin. Yeah, all right. See you soon. Have a great day. Bye. Take care.